Today, we're going to be talking about what is the cheapest laptop you can buy to start playing VR. Now, this video is part one of a series I'm planning on doing dealing with different kinds of desktop computers and laptops for VR, as well as different prices you should look into when buying a new rig. So in this part, we'll be looking into just laptops under $1,000 in Amazon. Other sites might offer better products, but if I focus on every other site, this video will probably be hours long. But if you want me to look into other sites, uh, let me know, of course. One of the questions I get asked the most is what laptop should I buy to start playing VR and I strongly suggest avoiding getting a laptop since future proofing is nearly impossible but I also understand that some people do not have the space to have a desktop build or just want a game on the go. To answer that question is very difficult since in reality Computers are not one size fits all, since we also got to figure out your price point and your headset. If you want a more personal PC advice regarding your headset, you can leave a comment down below or follow me on Instagram or Twitter. I can also answer some questions there. Now onto the video. We will be focusing in three different factors to consider when buying a gaming laptop. Number one is price. It is possible to spend $500 on a budget gaming PC, and it is also possible to spend $5,000 on a high-end PC. At the end of the day, it's down to what you want and what you can afford. Number two, graphics cards. For the graphics card, we will be trying to go for a new graphics card or relatively new. Of course, you can buy a laptop with an older graphics card, and this will also work, but a lot of the times when buying from a site like Amazon, the price difference is not that much. However, I think buying an older graphics card will make a huge impact on your budget when you're building your own PC. I strongly suggest buying a PC or a laptop with the following graphics cards. So make sure you pause and take a screenshot of the graphics cards to look into as well as the graphics cards you want to stay away from. And for the last part, we're going to be looking into usability. What I mean by this is the sort of performance that you can get for VR or regular gaming in the future. I want to set a baseline of 1080p gaming with roughly 60 FPS for the average gaming set. But for VR, getting 60 FPS varies a lot in how well optimized the game is, so it's hard to put all the games into the same category. But these laptops should work good for the Quest 2. I also wanted to list CPU, but a lot of the time you can get away with a lower end CPU and a decent graphics card. Keep in mind, CPU does matter and a lot, so we're gonna try to get the best deal possible for the least amount of money. Now for the first laptop on the list, just shy of $1,000, is the Asus TUF-15. This laptop has a 15-inch 144Hz display with a Core i7, an RTX 3060, 16 gigabytes of DDR5, and a 512 gigabytes SSD. I found this PC to be good on value and with a good graphics card with enough hardware to use for a few years with no problems. The only thing I would probably upgrade in the future is a bigger SSD to maybe a 1 or 2 terabytes if you're not planning on connecting it to an external hard drive. According to the listing there are two SSD slots so that's always a plus. I also like the sleek design that doesn't scream cheap gaming PC with all the crazy designs and it's more like minimalistic in a way. Now for the second laptop we have an Acer Nitro. 5 for $879. It has a 17 inch display, 144 Hz, an i7. We have an RTX 3050 Ti, a 16 gigabyte DDR4, and one terabyte NVMe SSD. Now, this is also a good value with a decent graphics card. Of course, we're going into budget laptops, and trust me, I know the RTX 3050 Ti is not the best VR graphics card, but it's more than capable to do so. Also, these are laptops, and they are limited on upgrades but this is a laptop that you can pretty much power on and start playing without having to worry about upgrading anything in a few years. However, there is also a cheaper version with less performance that will give you a decent PC VR experience. And it is the same laptop, the Acer Nitro 5, but this one is $694. Now this laptop has lower specs, of course. We have a 15-inch 144Hz display with a Core i5, an RTX 3050 non-TI version, which will be a little bit slower. We have 8GB of DDR4, and 256 gigabytes NVMe SSD. Now, this option will require you to upgrade a few components in the very, very near future if you want to have a decent VR experience. For example, switching from the 8 gigabytes to 
16 gigabytes of RAM as well as a bigger SSD. The only advantage I see from both Nitro 5 is the fact that there's room to add a second drive. So you can add a second SSD to expand your storage. Those three options are the best laptops I found for the price range. But there is another one that I don't really recommend but it's an option for those who are short in cash and want a gaming PC and will casually jump in some VR games with the mindset of sacrificing performance and video quality. And it is the Asus Tough F15 for $599. This is a 15 inch 144Hz display with a Core i5, a GTX 1650, 8GB of DDR4, and 512GB SSD. For this PC we're getting to the bottom of the barrel. Like this is one that you will have to upgrade. The same things as I mentioned before because its downfall it's the graphics card. Since the GTX 1650 is in a VR ready card it can still technically run VR games but then again you will be sacrificing performance and video quality by a lot. I know a few of my friends in VR chat run a similar setup and they seem to enjoy the game with decent performance but this might vary in different games especially the ones that are more hardware intensive. So yeah these are my top three budget gaming laptops that I found on Amazon. They are not the best laptops out there but consider them as a beginner or entry level gaming laptop that will function fine for everyday use in school work or just casual gaming. Anyways let me know what you think uh, and again if you have any questions feel free to comment down below or follow me on the other social media and I'll see you guys in the next video since we'll be talking about budget desktops under a thousand dollars.